All right, guys. I don't know if you can even see behind me. Um, but back here, this is where we stacked the hay that I just baled. And <clears throat> it is a pretty good uh, alfalfa grass mix. Um, so I put it with the first cutting alfalfa timothy mix. Uh, obviously, a lot of that has been cold out. I think I ended up with about a... 93 bales here uh, after I called some of the uh, more grassier hay as well as pulled the ones that were get heating a little bit uh, once I pulled all that out we ended up with uh, about 90 93 bales so I'll put that with the 85 bales I had before um, we end up with you know 175 bales so I have someone that's interested in this. They're wanting straight alfalfa. I already sold all my straight alfalfa. So I told them this has more alfalfa than what they normally get. So I'm going to take a couple of bales, throw it in the truck. I'm gonna take it over there, give it to them to try, have their horses try. That's good news. Um, they liked the hay and they actually paid me on the spot for all 175 bales. So um, hopefully, they can come get that hay before we start bailing this next batch of hay here. Time will tell. Morning, guys. We are getting ready to check the tractor out, check the disc mine out, get everything hooked up, and cut some hay. Pretty clear outlook on the weather. We get the disc bind hooked up, just kind of check it out, get it greased up, and uh, well, I'm not in a super big rush simply because there is a lot of dew on, and since I'm not pushing it on, on that outlook of the weather at least, no. Who knows what that becomes but uh there is a lot of dew on the ground so i'm just kind of letting that burn off and uh i'll cut hay whenever i get to it which is kind of abnormal really usually you just get up at the crack of dawn and do whatever you can get everything ready and then then you get going but um uh, this time I'm going to take my time and just kind of check stuff out. I'm going to go ahead and swap the PTO right here where it's sitting. Um, then I'm going to check the engine oil, check the hydraulic oil, top them off if they need. Just a little example whenever I say heavy dew, this is what I'm talking about, guys. This is just a little patch of grass here by the barn. Uh, you can see how wet the lawnmower tires are. I literally just drove it from here to here uh, but you can actually see the water just sitting on the grass I'll kick my boot through it so here's my boot now I have a little bit of moisture on it just from walking through it but you see this side of it you see the water just pour off of it heavy dew I know there's a lot of people that don't understand why we would use a tether it's just a waste of time going with the field well for us when it's high humidity, you can't really even get the hay dry where it needs to be, no matter how much time you give it, no matter how much you tet it. But without tetting it and being able to fluff that up and mix it around and get the hay off the ground, it doesn't even get close. If you have a question on how I did that, you can go to uh, one of my previous videos, uh, swapping uh, 540 PTO with a 1000 PTO for a white 2135. This is if you have a dual speed PTO. If you have a single speed, it's going to be a 1000 and you cannot swap it.
unless you change the whole PTO unit out for a dual speed. Um, so if you had any questions on that, feel free to comment below or I'll stick the link to that video in there just in case anybody's got any questions and you don't have to search for it then. Uh, but anyways, on to the oil. It's full. It's on the ad mark. And then the dual speed or hydraulic shift, I should say. Dual speed's a Ford thing. Hydraulic shift right here. Reach in here and focus. It's full and clean. Woods are good with the exception of the engine oil. So we're going to top that off and then we'll pull the tractor out, top the fuel off, um, get the disc line. So just to touch on the oil that I use uh, for a Hercules engine, white 2135. Uh, it requires straight 30 grade. The oil that I use mostly is TRC, which is Texas Refinery Corp. This is a Molly XL Prospect Motor Oil Single Viscosity SAE30. Um, in my experience, they have very, very good quality oil. It's not, it's not cheap, but I like to run good oil. Um, they have a oil sampling program where if you buy their oil, they supply free samples to you. They give you the sample bottles and all that stuff and they analyze it for free. All you have to do is pull the sample and send it to them. Press the button, take on my wife's wallets and stuff off. some Kool-Aid to the tank. Had wet stuff wedged in here pretty good, so we gotta ease it out. Are you reach? I get going and things get hot, it'll stop working. Oh, saw our first movement on the gauge. Let's watch it. Here we go. I can smell the neighbor's dairy cows. Must, the wind must be out of the right direction. Or the wrong direction, everyone will look at it. All right, that's cool enough. I generally have two hands to do this. Maybe I can use a foot. Hold on. Well, I use you guys. Turn that valve off. And then I'll go ahead and drain whatever fuel is left in the line. all the moisture on my tires. That much do and it's 12.30. So it's not like it's eight or nine in the morning. Around. 
I think he might be a bull rider when he gets older. We'll see. Um, he just had a birthday, and he actually really started walking, you know, taking more than just one step at a time on his birthday. Mm -mm -mm. All right, guys. Can you say late start? This is how it happens, you think. Oh, yeah, you know, I got plenty of time. I'm going to take my time, do this, do that. I'm not in a big hurry. Uh, well, I went in to eat lunch, which you saw. Got done eating lunch. I was getting ready to come out here, and my wife said, Hey, uh, I want to go look at some bunk beds for the kids. I said, Okay, go ahead. She said, Well, I don't want to go by myself with, with both kids and everything going on. I said, Okay. I said, Well, I got to cut hay. She said, Well, they close at 5, and it's about 3 o'clock. She said, So we can't stay gone long, anyways. Just getting ready, just now getting ready to start cutting hay. It's 5.30 on Saturday. Uh, I do have my drone. I'm gonna try to get some drone footage for you guys. Uh, we're gonna get cutting. We got about uh, a little over 20 acres to do. Uh, but luckily, the rig and everything is ready to go. Let's just do one more last check here right quick. Hydraulic hose is hooked up, PTO shaft hooked up, everything tied up, lights are hooked up. Everything's been greased and everything. We're ready to roll, guys. I'm actually going to cut my tap first, but since i got to drive through here anyways, I'm going to go ahead and mow, start mowing here, come out back there. So I'll just have one swap to cut here. But, uh, so this is probably the last field that I cut. It's just a twig. Oh my goodness, guys. It's a thing of beauty, really. It's a thing of beauty. Look at that. Look at that. Oh yeah. Oh, oh, oh. All right, guys, we have arrived. I'm definitely cutting the tap first. I just have to decide if I'm gonna go ahead and cut this all at one, one, one field and then break it separate and bail it separate from my other mix here or what and I may end up doing that because it's just a pain to have to mow like I have been here's the tap it is a little far along it's been ready to cut for probably two weeks so it's got some seed heads on it you can see it's a little bit yellowish here didn't get a, as much fertilizer on it but you can see it where it's a lot greener out there got more fertilizer all right one number two already haven't made it very far. This was a little bit bigger than the last one. Which I knew there would be limbs because if you guys watch uh, Corn Star, you know, the goofy guy in Iowa, they had that storm come through. Well, that same storm came through here, but it must have lost all of the juice before it got here because it wasn't nothing like what they had. It, but. It was windy, and we got a little bit of rain. Not a whole lot of rain, but a little bit. Just drag this in here. Uh, you know, no major damage, but limbs down and stuff. So I knew there'd be some limbs down. And I haven't even got to the, the place where the limbs are normally down. That's going to be back along this woods over here. Well. So far, it hasn't been so bad back here. This is the first one I had to stop for, and I made it over halfway down. So 
I'm walking down here. Haven't found too much out in the field, but I wanted to point it out. This is the stuff I'm, con I, I'm concerned about. <laughs> this bigger stuff. And there's several trees right here in this corner that are big, dead, and crumbly. That one right there, it's been there ever since I've been here. And I've got two over here toward, more towards the corner. There's always limbs out of them. My previous neighbor was less than cooperative. So since it's on the line, technically I can't do anything about it. Uh, but we just had new neighbors move in and they seem really nice. I haven't brought it up to them yet. But I'm going to see if they'll let me cut these dead trees down so I'm not constantly having these limbs like this fall out in my field. I don't even know if I'll be able to move this one here by hand. You say, oh, just go around it. Yeah, well, that's fine. But you have to come back here and move it eventually. Otherwise, you get stuff growing up here, and then before you know it, that's woods. Then it happens again, and you creep out. And I already went, whenever I moved here, I went around this entire field and cleared probably 70 feet. It was growed out 70 feet all the way around. And then I took an entire fence row out at that end. That's why it's open down there. So, you know, I'm all for wildlife habitat, but I'm not for losing good property to scrub brush bull crap. So I, I, I always get as close as I can. Not, I'm not saying I push it with the disc vine, but I always clear back as close as I can. And then I lay out with the tractor. You know, I just want to keep it cleaned up or you lose property over time. All right, I'm gonna see if I can get this log. All right, guys, it was there, now it's over there. Mission accomplished. I don't see anything down through there that I can see from here, so we're going back to the tractor and we will uh, continue cutting. Woo! Tell you what, when you gotta do this kind of stuff, it takes forever to make that first round. I know technically that first round is the largest, but that's not why it takes the longest. This is why it takes the longest, right here. it up here a little bit uh, so we're back into the solid tap here you'll probably see behind me you can see the seed heads it is what it is pretty cool right down in here with a little wet a little bit better out there the skunk has to be the spray because I saw what I thought was a rabbit no it turned out to be a skunk he's right out here in front of me and I really don't want to hit him because if he's old enough to spray he's definitely gonna spray when he gets hit and I don't want my hay stinking up like crazy that'll ruin that batch of hay that's right in there I thought it was a rabbit at first but Right, guys so I just got out of the tractor we're on our third round as you can see three here two, 
you over here. Uh, I wanted to show you. It's 6.45, almost 7 o'clock in the evening. Just how wet it is. It is soaking wet down in here. The ground is wet. There's still spots with some water standing. Uh, it's going to make quite a bit of hay. This out here is not looking as bad as that early one I saw. Typically, would actually do this last. The reason I do it last is this is the one most likely time to hit something. If you're going along a fence, you hit a fence post, you get into some wire. You're going along woods, you get into some limbs. Uh, going along a ditch, you get into the ditch or something. Get a bunch of mud in there. However, I'm doing it before the end of the field. Uh, so I've done the interior of it because I know I'm going to be finishing up in the dark. this I'll just have straight shots on the in interior uh, like I said typically I would do five which I've done and then I go ahead and do the interior and then I do this last just in case I hit something out here then at least I'm broke down after I have everything cut all right I'm gonna put you guys down so I can keep an eye on sticks and stuff all right we gotta move this one last limb here this is the one that I missed just around the corner, the first one, or the second, third, I don't know which one it was. Uh, Speaking size oak, definitely don't want to run that through there. Of course, you're not going to, it's easy to see. All right. I need both hands for this one. Got him. What we're talking about. There he is. Back to it. Honestly, the, the, the first, round or two first outside two rounds are the worst i guess if if you're if you got a nice square 40 or 80 or 160 or whatever it is and you're out in the middle and you got farm fields all around you it wouldn't matter but here we don't have that luxury we're always up against the woods up against the tree line up against a fence row so it is a pain but what we got. Big old boy came out to ride a few rounds with me. He loves riding in the track. He loves the steering wheel, but whenever we're moving, look at how good he does. He says, I know something's going on, and I don't need to be touching that thing because daddy's got it under control. But he pays really good close attention to what's going on so we can learn. bigger part that I had started on now I got to make a decision because now I got a big storm coming my way <laughs> all 
All right, we are across the ditch here, still in the backfield. We got about probably four acres here. Finished cutting this, and then just got that filled up by the road. And I've decided I'm going to go ahead and we're going to cut it because the, the outlook is still good, other than this little storm right. If it's still green and it rains on it. You're good. If it's already dried down and it rains on it, you're bad. I'm sure you can see that lightning. It's a little counterintuitive to be out cutting hay while it's lightning. Kind of barely see that. It's you can see it really good with the naked eye. Camera's really kind of washing that out, I guess. 